Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics out on the water. We have got an absolute cracker morning and not only that, we've got our hands on the new TT Switchblade Plus. Three sizes, a stack of epic colors and today we're going to take it for a swim and give you some tips on retrieves and how to fish this lure. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. You gotta go real slow on this guy. All right, we're fishing a bit of deeper water. We found some bait and schooled fish. So we're basically just throwing slightly up current, big long cast. And we're just watching that line to see the blade hit the bottom. Fishing that 14 gram, so it gets down nice and quick. And then we're just vibing it back, letting it hit the bottom again. Pulse it, let it hit the bottom. And we're just working it back across the current and through where we mark the fish on the sounder. Yep. Oh, 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 not the giant we were hoping for. First fish, <laughs> but there we go. Some action on the blade. We've dropped down to the middle size blade, which is gonna be a great all rounder, fresh and salt. And we've just moved across into a bit shallow water around a bit of rubble on the cast, cast and just hopping that blade back, just on, much like a soft plastic on that pulse pulse. The cool thing about fishing the blade is sometimes you'll find the bite is a blade bite sometimes it's a plastic bite so by having the blades in your kit you've always got that option of switching it up and they're great for fishing deep when you've got a bit of flow because they've got that additional weight so for chasing guys like this they're awesome we just need a bigger fella but that's a cool little pinky little snapper on that middle size blade those hooks don't miss their little owner black nickel chemically sharpened hooks. So pretty little fish to start our session. There you go, a little snapper to kick things off on the TT Switchblade Plus. So this is the 42 millimeter seven gram size. So it's perfect for the water depth that we're fishing in here. We've got a little bit of flow. We're in about three meters of water. And the area that we're fishing is a long rubbly rock bar. So it's basically just lots of rubble and, and stuff on the bottom and we're hopping this blade over and through all that rubble bottom. So this blade, the seven gram weight and that, that metal blade allows for a big long cast. So we can pretty much spot lock here and fish a whole lot of this rock bar from the one position. And we're just letting that get to the bottom and just giving it that two hop, pulse, pulse, and then the pause back to the bottom, pulse, pulse, pause back to the bottom. The weight of the blade and the vibration allows you to fish it quite quickly, cover the area with that flow that's in the water as well. So we'll keep throwing this around, see if we can find another one. This is a color that you guys are gonna to love too, I reckon. This is the motor oil color. So you should see this guy when you hit it with a UV light. It's absolutely brilliant. So see if we can find ourselves something a little bit bigger. Yep. Just pulsing that blade back over that rubble. Little flat fish. <laughs> He's got an absolute mouthful of that. There you go, those treble hooks don't miss on that blade, that's for sure. Switchblade Plus, motor oil color. Just a little flatty, but good fun. Put a bend in the rod. Yep, right off a weed edge. Just using the sounder to find a bit deeper water. There's a fair bit of snot weed around at the moment, that slimy sort of weed that attaches itself to the other weed. So basically we're looking for a bit deeper water where there's less weed. We got ourselves a nice grunter. It's on the middle size switchy again in that motor oil color. So, you know, pretty quick time, three species of eating the blade, a little snapper, a little flatty and a, and a grunter. So that's the cool thing about these blades. Everything eats them. They love that vibration. They love that little bite size profile. And that, gr that grunter has just whacked that motor oil color in the middle size blade. So, handful of fish. You can tell what he is. <laughs> Javelin fish or grunter. So, we'll send him back in. See you, buddy. He's away. Fish on. How's that? First, ca first cast back in again after catching that grunter. This feels reasonably solid, might be a flatty. So basically, oh, he's not happy. He's pretty well trying to chew that leader off. 
lucky we dropped that 12 pound on there. He scoffed that blade. There we go, so that's two fish and two casts. We basically started on that rock bar in a bit deeper water, and we got, uh, got that little snapper. We were trying for a good snapper. We got a little snapper, which was cool, and then a little flatty, and now a grunter and a flathead in two casts. And you can see how much he liked that blade. That's for sure, he has scoffed that whole blade down in the gob. So we've moved from that deeper water. We're in sort of three to five metres. Now we're into around two metres, fishing along a weed edge, and there's actually a bit of a hole here, a bit of a basin in the mouth of a drain. So we're just kind of working that blade around the weed edges and into the middle of that basin where these fish are holding. There you go. That's why we use our net. So that guy came up with his head absolutely firing side to side, and those guys have got pretty raspy mouths, so he's chewed through that leader eventually, but he's safely in the net, so just grab a hold of him. All right, so there we go. That's a you know, nice little 43, 44 centimetre flatty. And he's got that blade well and truly in the gob there. He has inhaled that Switchblade Plus in the motor oil colour. And that's in that middle size blade, the seven gram blade. So good one for sort of that. You know, we were fishing it in three to five. Now we're still fishing it in two. As we get shallower, we might downsize to the, the smaller blade depending on the, what's on the bottom and whether we want to roll over the top of the weed or whether we want to hop down on some, some clearer bottom. But yeah, it's another cool little fish. So the area that we're fishing here is basically a, a big surround of flats, probably a metre deep and draining at low tide. And we're sitting in a bit of a basin, in a bit of a hole. So the blade's perfect for prospecting the, the deeper hole that we're sitting in. It gets to the bottom quick, we can cover plenty of water quickly, and it sends out a lot of vibration to attract fish. So also appeals to a wide range of species, which is a great thing about the blade. So we're just working our way in around this hole to see if we can find a few fish. The fish will be sitting in here, and then as that tide drops out, they'll move out through the drain and get out of here. But it's yeah worth a bit of a crack while there's some water in here. So we're just fanning our casts around the boat. We're pretty well just spot locked right in the middle of the deeper section. And we're just going to cast like a fan, fan our way around, cover all of the water. And I'm just fishing a, a simple one, two sort of pulsing retrieve. You, the great thing with the blade is when you lift it, you'll feel it pulse. And the cool thing about the Switchblade Plus is it pulses on a slow retrieve, which is really important. There's a lot of blades out there that don't do anything when you fish them slow. So you basically might as well throw a stick out there or a rock. This thing, as soon as you start moving the rod, that blade starts vibrating. So it vibrates at super slow speeds, but you can also burn it or rip it quickly without it blowing out and, and losing control. It still tracks, still vibrates. So it's important because it gives you that wide range of retrieves and the versatility of a blade, that vibing from slow speeds to faster speeds. It's also easy to tell if your blade's fouled or if you've got weed on there, because that vibration, you'll lose that vibration if you've got weed on there or if your blade's tangled up. So it makes it nice and simple to know if you, if you throw a big long cast and your weed up straight away, you can tell. So you can get it sorted, get it back out there again. All right, I fish on, not a bad lizard. That's on that. Wagasaki minnow, middle-sized blade, seven grammar in the net. You beauty. There you go. That's a beautiful colour. Just hopping that blade just along a weed edge. Great for covering water with a big long cast and just hopping it back. Might just put the lip grips in this guy. Lip grips are handy. Less damage to the fish and yourself if you can get the lip grips in there and get a hold of them. That'll help us sort, manage the fish, sort the fish out. So get a better grab in there. Come on, mate. Open your gob. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. There we go, that's that Wagasaki minnow colour. Beautiful 
pinky purpley top on there, purpley looking top with a, a nice baitfish lateral line down the middle there and a silver, silvery color that silver gives it a real good flash in the water. When you do rip the blade, you can see the blade flashing in the water from the silver flanks on that blade there, that Wagasaki minnow. All right, so we just grabbed the pliers to get those sticky black owner black nickel chemically sharpened trebles out. So there you go, that's that Wagasaki minnow. It's a beautiful blue. I've got that darker back, that beautiful lateral line stripe and that sort of thing, and then that silver on the flanks to give you that flash. So really good bait fish imitation. That's gonna be a great one in the, in the fresh and in the salt. Very cool. Nice little flatty. That's a dinner size flatty if you're all wanting to keep one for a feed. So that flatty we just landed then on that Wagasaki minnow, that was basically pulled from a weed edge. So previously we, sit, we were sitting in a bit of a basin and we were spraying casts all around the boat. So where we are here, we're basically working along a weed edge. So we call it paralleling an edge and we'll put the drone up and show you what we're doing because we're basically sitting just off the edge and working our way along parallel to the edge and we're throwing a cast into the shallow, a cast straight in line with us and a cast out a little bit deeper. And that way we're covering plenty of water and we're working our way right along this edge where the flathead like to hold. So you'll see from the drone, big flat, bit of a deeper sort of creek section and then the edge that we're working. So we'll pick our way along the edge and see if we can find another one. So we've made our cast forward here. We're just holding on the electric motor and we're hopping that blade back just with that one, two hop, hit the bottom again, one, two hop. And basically I'll throw one, two, three, three or four casts. And then we'll use the electric motor and move forward about a cast distance. And then we'll do the same again, move forward. So it's a really, really systematic approach to working this edge with the blades. The blades are great because they get down quick and they vibrate a lot to attract the fish. So we can cover water quickly and quickly work our way along this weed edge to see if there's anybody home. If not, we'll just zip off and try somewhere else. Behind me, you'll see some of the best fish o's out there and that's these birds whether you're fishing the fresh or the salt it's a great idea to keep an eye out for birds because birds are a signal that an area is full of bait and food so those birds up there feeding on the bank they're feeding in around that drain or there's lots of bait crabs prawns all sorts of things will be flushing out of those drains and the flathead and other species will be here at the mouths of the drains feeding on all that bait so always remember we always say things like find the bait find the fish find the birds can often be find the fish as well. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. You gotta go real slow on this guy. Come on, don't shake that head so much, buddy. Don't shake that head so much, don't shake that head so much. This is a good one on the motor oil. Just picked it up close to the boat. We're just fishing one to three and two to four kilo spin gear, perfect for throwing these blades. With that 12 pound leader, I'm just going gently, gently on this guy because I think he's got that blade down in the gob. Oh no, I can see the blade. We still want to keep him pinned in there though. Oh, close, 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 come on. <clears throat> Great fun on the two to four kilo red belly. 2500 same RHD, eight pound braid and that 12 pound leader. Come on, get in that net. You're in the net, you're in the net. Oh, what a beautiful fish. That is what we're looking for. Hopping that motor oil. That's a seven gram, 42 mil. Beautiful size for what we're doing here, which is sort of hopping in between a meter and three meters of water. Just bouncing that blade on the bottom. Great fun on that light gear. Get him out of the net here and give you a bit better look at him. Or her, that'd be, that'd be a nice big female, that one. So that'd definitely be getting, oh, that'd be 60. You can put her on the grip so you can have a look at her. Just grab that set of lip grips. Those TT lip grips are good, good for securing the fish. That way you do less damage to yourself and also less damage to the fish. Oh, oh, oh. You 
can see that blade there. That's the motor oil colour in the TT Switchblade Plus and a Cracker Flatty. What a nice fish. That's pretty cool, just hopping the shallows with that blade, sends out the vibration, a bit of flash and attracts those fish and gets the strike. All right, so there she is in the water. We'll give her a swim. Oh, she's fired up still, she's ready to rumble. And we'll just send her on her way. There she goes, back down to the bottom. That's what it's all about. TT Switchblade Plus, fish on.